Hey guys, what's up? What if this gaming here and today I'm bringing you a yawn video and this is one of the videos where you actually have to feel everything is going down the drain but you have to keep on to the game and if you keep doing what you do you sometimes win. This is one of the videos where basically the enemy has everything pushed you're not having the smartest decisions in the game yet. Still, you're doing pretty good for your team. And your team does a lot of things to a point where it is discussionable. But you just have to keep on pushing and everything will turn out in your favor. This is like a motivational video. And, as I know, many people are Yawn fans. I have finally, I've, I've, I've finally been able to show you the Celestial Yawn because I think he is re looking really good. Like I think that is one of the reasons why you should buy the Codex if you are into skins, because with this, with the particle effects, with the dragon effects and everything like that, I think it turned out pretty, pretty nicely. That said, there are things which aren't that nice. If you take, for example, the, the Frostblade Butterfly or the, the Tulan, I think they don't look that good. I don't think that they're actually worth them. Um, if you take, for example, the Starfall Zin, um, Zell, Zil, Zell, Zol, I don't know, like the guy who's the whirlwind. If you take him, I haven't seen his particle effects, but he's r looking pretty dope. Like, I think this skin is really, really looking great. And for the Aram skin skill as well, like, um, I think it's worth to have these things if you are really into buying stuff like that, but otherwise, it's kind of it's it's just like an optical thing so if you really like it you don't have to have it okay so let's go down to this um team composition it is going on pretty bad like we are we are behind right now there uh you can you can tell from the team combination and you can tell from their communication that the other team completely knew what they were doing our Wukong came in, no thing, no ping, nothing. Like, no one knew that he wanted to attack. Like, it was kind of sure because he had this aggressive moving going on. But then I didn't really know what he was what he was doing. So, at this, at this point, like, thought process-wise, I would say first objective for us was to get the first tower in order to free us up a little bit and in order to make the rotation work. So I'm trying to farm as much as I can. Like I always try to get the birds. Luckily for me, the Dio-chan is playing a really passive support. So she is not stealing me any farm, which is good. And I'm waiting for my first item to appear. Like I got the boots right now. And after that, I'm going with the beast. Don't, I don't know why, like don't, don't, don't take me granted on that. Like I'm not really a Yawn player. Uh, so I don't really know why this is in the build. I have just taken one of those one of those builds which are pretty good. And I can see what the Ryoma is trying to do there. Like he's trying to trying to reel us in. So we have to play that defensively. And I think we're doing a pretty solid job here. Like nothing too scary, nothing too good. Um, Diu-chan is a bit too far out in the open for my taste. And I have to make I have to make a way back here because the stacking of the Alistair is just too good. Like, if he can land both hits on me, I'm I'm pretty much dead. And I can see what he's trying to do here. Like, he's trying to get me in. But I think I'm doing a good job positioning-wise um, in order to get away. And unluckily for the Dio-chan, she was just getting one stack from the Maganga. And that made her that made her killed by those two guys. Uh, just things that happen. And now you can see that even the Ryoma is coming here. And in, in that positioning... Because the Wukong made an attempt here to go in, I was able to get the Maganga. And that, that was pretty, pretty ace. Like, I really, I really liked the thing. And after the first couple of minutes where I had the feeling like things are not going too well, I thought like we have, we have solved the situation quite good. And now we are even in terms of kills in, and deaths. So that's, that's a good thing. Like, and look at that, look at that beautiful recall animation. Like with that dragon, that's so cool. I really like that. I, I like that. Look at that. Oh my god, he's shooting like a dragon. That's that's pretty cool. I think they have spent some time to get that skin into a new effecting. 
um, which you don't usually have if you have certain skins or if you take other mobiles. Um, it's sometimes that you buy something for money and you're like, what's going on? Like, why? Why basically we are doing this? So with a character not as mobile as Violet or, for example, a Hayate, I have the feeling that the Alistair combo is pretty good against me because I always have to stand still in order to get my abilities to work. And there will be a situation later in the game where I think Alistair even kills me because you have to, with your one, you have to really drag that to the to the point of impact where you want it to land. You cannot just make it, you can just not press it and make it loose. And that's a, that's a pretty bad thing, but I'm really good at poking him. Like... With the extended range that you get from your passive, I think this it's still winnable. I just so I just really like the fact that there is this dragon theme all over the place. I'm using my two here in order to get me protected because for especially for lower health players that is a bad thing. Like that thing can kill you. It had, it had has killed me a couple of times where I try to recall and I when I recall. Sometimes I do not pay attention anymore, and that was a that was a really really good landed ult and stuff. So the uh, sprint got me to to the point where I was able to get out of here. But look at that, like he's doing a really really good job, and I have to be careful right now in order to not get killed because he's just stacking all his his abilities on top of me. But now I know that he has used all of his abilities, and I'm trying to get my ult in. So I'm trying to stun him in order to get my ult really to full full work and fully loaded. But right now I have the beast, which means I am able to be super sustainable right now. And that was just that was just bad luck. Like I didn't pay attention. I didn't have the vision. So unfortunately for me, Ryoma had an easy time to get me. And I'm just I'm just pre-checking my build, like post post checking my build if that's really good and if that can work. So. Good for me, the tower is still alive, but we are a little bit behind. I think they have taken the dragon, Abyssal Dragon, so we are we are behind in gold lead. And what I always like to do, and I like the fact, did you hear that sound? That was the sound that I actually hit something, so you can tell. And I think that it has a pretty long range. Um, this shot and I think it's really really good on getting enemies away because it still does does a pretty pretty tremendous amount of damage and now I know that he is in that brush so what I wanted to do is like it's like a rabbit hole I want him to get out there and that's what we're able to do with the combined powers of Vera and me and now I've got the Tempest Blade which means I will be even more beneficial and don't don't get me wrong that was a complete mistake. Like that was su such a big mess mistake. I didn't want to do it. And now you can see the full power of Hayate. He is so strong because he's such a mobile hero. He can he can just easily flicker around with his two, and that makes him so great against normal AD carries, especially ones that have to use their abilities in order to be a bit more powerful, such as Yawn. He can just dash everything. That's like that's like how easy it is for someone like Yon to be able to do so. And what I, I what I would assume like what you really what you really learn or what you really will notice in the in the later part of the video that we're actually having quite quite some trouble because we don't have a real tank. We have a lot of damage dealers, but these damage dealers are not really that capable in turning everything down. And therefore we have a hard time on getting it. And I'm trying with now I'm trying with my extended range to get the to get into um to get into the tower range in order to, to kill that tower. Bam, there goes the old. Easy kill for me, I got the Rioma, but if I wouldn't have taken the kill, I would think uh, that not even someone else would have had the kill, but that we that the Rioma would have been able to get out of the fight and that would have been that would, would have been pretty bad because he is the jungler so every time you are able to get someone such as the jungler killed 
you are having an easier time on your mark because what yeah and that's that's a really nice combination of old and the two as i wanted to say every time the enemy jungler is dead that just puts him behind in terms of he is not able to do something against it because he's basically the one who will have a position like a pause in his jungle rotation which means he can't get any kills he can't get any xp he can't get any gold so Dealing with the enemy jungler is always a pretty good thing. Because as you know, the jungler is one of the positions and it's one of the main keys to win a game early. It doesn't really matter if you're playing quite long. And there's a... Oh no, there wasn't the, there wasn't the mark, so I wasn't able to kill the ganga. So it's always a good thing to, to have the jungler in a good position to keep him down, to put him down and that's always something that you should do and i just had to kill him like there wasn't uh, there wasn't any option of getting that kill for xanis because you have to secure things like that after afterwards he's killing our xanis putting us behind and that in a situation like that where we are behind 12 15 and i think they have the the abyssal dragon again we cannot risk anything because we have to turn this around we have to win the game and right now it's looking it's looking okay it's like we have some towers they have some towers as well and i'm able to secure the sage golem here so i am denying um xp that they could could easily get and right now i'm on the maganga I have just finished the Cleave Sancti, so my critical um, critical chance abilities and the damage that I do goes up. So this is an easy kill for me. I don't know what he was thinking, like if he was thinking that he can basically um, kill me or like damage me because of his ability to have this to have this toxic effect, like the venom. And in this, this just shows like yes. Wukong is a pretty mobile character and he's pretty good, but on the other hand, he has the problem that he's pretty squishy and if you are stuck too deep in the enemy lines, they can easily farm you off. Especially if you have someone such as Alistair who is able to kind of neglect your mobility. Like, I had so many times where I was fighting against Alistair as the Flash and I was always before I realized mistake, like I was always going in with my one and I wanted to use my ult and afterwards I wanted to flash out. The easy thing for Alistair is he can just push his his win button, like his ult button, and you will be stuck in your track. Like it's it's as easy as that. You will you will just be stuck. He doesn't have to check where you're coming from, he doesn't have to check what you're doing, he just has to push the button and then he's gonna go. And right now I'm feeling like really successful, like an A2-0 with, with Yawn for me, who's a really bad Yawn player. I felt like I'm, I'm king of the world and we were able to turn this around. Right now we are leading 19 to 17, but because we are not really good at pushing that final tower and it takes us several attempts, this game is just being pretty, pretty long. Like there will be another seven minutes until we finish the game. And it will, won't be like minutes in terms of um, just pure gameplay. There will be the results afterwards. Like I'm gonna show you those as well. But this is just like it's gonna t t it's gonna take forever. And at this point, I realize like yeah, I'm doing I'm doing a lot of damage, but I need more sustain, and I I need this recovery item. I need to be resurrected. So I'm taking the blade of the eternity right now, and I am trying to steal that Mike Golem here as well and it doesn't really work and now i have to be careful because ryoma has the slow on his blade so i'm trying to get out here as far as fast as possible and the good thing like what i haven't seen from the ryoma and that's a that's a uh, from the baldum and that's a good thing i wasn't and that's like there's nothing that i can do about it like so much cc our team is divided um there's not that much that we can do and as i haven't finished the blade of the eternity yet this is bollocks like we are fighting we are fighting a game right now the Xanus is pushing into position we're trying to we're trying to damage that tower but instead of going in and sacrificing himself which i think he's going to do afterwards anyways like right now look at that fight Xanus against ryoma like he could have he could have forced that tower through 
that would would that would have been effective like that with that i would be okay that he's taking a side lane but he didn't he didn't take that tower so right now we have a bad positioning and this game is almost over like this is 14 minutes and and i'm pretty much thinking like okay there's not that much that we can do okay the zen has got the tower so that's all right but he could have done that earlier, got away and helped us out at the, at the bottom. So I think the decision is still quite questionable. And right now, the enemy team is down to two members. We've got the Alistair, we've got the Maganga, we've got everything set. We have a wave with a super minion. Xanus is going from the, coming from the side. I don't really, I don't really get that action. I'm almost dead. Like that's that's how. That's how static you have to be as a yawn. Like good players will, will laugh about it. They will be like, oh my god, you like you completely you you just you just played that completely wrong. And this is the moment where we almost threw the game. I have to I have to get out here. There's not that much that I can do to help my team. Now we are being oppressed by the Hayate, and that's a pretty bad situation because Hayate can just easily flick in. I'm lucky that, and that's what what he does right now. Like easy peasy. I should have I should have just ran away. Like that was a that was a mistake. And instead of getting and now comes the now comes the worst situation of the game. I haven't seen anything like this. I simply don't know what's going on. This is like the the wasted distest distest wasted distest 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 most wasted dragon in the entire series of Arena of Valor. Look at that. He unleashes the dragon, gets killed afterwards, and now they have a free dragon to just farm up. Lucky for us, the only person who does that is the Baldum, but the effort of the dragon that Wukong killed alone by himself, like he did a solo kill instead of helping anything. Wukong did a solo kill on the Abyssal Dragon, uh, on the on the Dark Slayer, released the Dark Slayer Dragon, and now the Dark Slayer Dragon is standing at the front line of the enemy with one health bar, and now he's dead. What is going on? Like, what was the intention of that play, and why I am dead so fast? That talking about mistakes, I have I have realized that Alistair is doing a lot of damage before, and now. The same mistake happens again. Like after after I was I was benefiting from the uh, Blade of the Eternity, I'm doing the same mistake again. I should have played that a little bit safer. I should have played that a little bit more behind, like standing behind and trying to get into the into the back line after the tanks have done their stuff, like their tanks. Um, but I was standing too much in the open. I should have used my range to to do so. And this is the second time where I thought this is game. Because look at that. Wukong is going in. A four, a four against two. There's not that much work that we can do. And actually, Ryoma was already good gaming. Now we get that tank. And they're not, they're not able to do something. And I'm revived. And look at that. Look at that comeback. Bam, bam, bam. Triple kill on our base. Triple kill in our base. And that is the sweetness of this game. That's why I love this game so much. We already threw the game and we are able to get back. And now there's a Ryoma standing between me and the core in order to get that thing into a win, into winning something like this. So, and look at that beautiful kiting. I say, I saved the day. Like that was, that was how crazy it is. Like after, after, I don't think that my mistake caused the game to, to be in a way as it was before. But I think that this was a main accident and it could have cost us the game. So I was there for my team to win that game. 
And that's why I think I was a deserved MVP with almost 30% of the total damage that was done in this match. I don't even I don't even know or remember how I got Yawn into seasoned. I think I played him a couple of times in the in the two versus one. That's the build. I, I'm not entirely sure about the build, but look at how much money Dio Chan had. Guys, thanks for watching. That was Void of Dust Gaming. See you around soon. Bye bye.